Hello everybody, Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here, and we have more Cobra Convergence 7 for you, and we have someone returning from Cobra Convergence 6. Uh, I'd like to introduce Rob. Rob, uh, just please introduce yourself and uh, tell everybody who you are and what you do. Hey everybody, this is Rob Vegas, and I'm checking in from Melbourne, Australia. And of course, I'm here on HCC 788's show for Cobra Convergence 7, and... Yeah, we're ready to roll with an awesome video today. So, yeah, let's get cracking. Yes, um, and uh, you are no stranger to Cobra Convergence. Uh, last year, uh, you filled in for someone who had to drop off the calendar for personal reasons. Um, but you were already jumping on the Cobra Convergence. You were already... Um, you were already doing it. So uh, tell everybody what you did last year, uh, even before you uh, were put on the calendar and, and helped us out. Yeah. So last year with Cobra Convergence, um, I decided to just, you know, turn it up to 11 and do a video on YouTube of my show, which is called Assemble the Troops Every Day for the Month of Cobra Convergence. So we ended up putting out 31 videos, one every day for the whole Convergence. And, you know, just to bring the noise and yeah, spread the word about our good friends at Cobra and how awesome the characters are and spread the love as it were. So yeah, we just wanted to dial it up and um, yeah, somehow by a, a real fluke, uh, I ended up being a featured presenter then and um, again this year. So, you know, you're, yeah, they, they must must not have had anyone else. Um, well, you, your name uh, was the first and only name that came up. So, uh, like, everybody wanted you in, uh, and I think everybody appreciated what you did. That's, you know, I have to tip my hat, my, my invisible hat to you. Uh, because that's a that's a significant uh, amount of videos, and I personally appreciate it. Uh, and so I, now I have an opportunity to directly say thank you for all of the work that you did last year, and I'm really excited about um, what you're going to do this year. Yeah, yeah, no, well, you're welcome, and um, you know, it's it's just part of what I do. Uh, so. Yeah, it's always a good time and, and I think the fun element of, you know, sharing about the the figures and the characters and of course the memories of, you know, enjoying them um, when we're a bit younger and everything like that is really important. And, you know, some people might have like say, for example, a couple of years ago before I started my YouTubing assembled the troops journey. Like if someone walked into my garage and found the box of all the toys and the bits in it, they would have just gone, all right, well, this is just trash. Let's send it to the, the garbage tip or to the op shop or something like that. Um, but yeah, when I, you know, found all my old GI Joes and everything, I was like, oh man, these guys need some love. And, and, you know, I, I made it a mission. Um, and especially after seeing, you know, say all of the YouTube creators out there, like your good self and, you know, Kevin, everyone out there, you know, I was like, well, you know, these guys, these action figures, <laughs> like they really, you know, deserve to be shared and enjoyed and put out there. And, and I've got, you know, I'm like a jukebox, you know, you put a dime or a quarter in me and I could talk about each figure for hours on end. And I want to share that with everyone. And that's kind of how it all started. And um, yeah, also, of course, with Cobra Conversion 6, you know, I just was like, let's step on the gas and um, yeah, get everyone on board and, and spread the stories and the fun and, you know, make sure these action figures aren't you know falling apart and rotting in some you know tub in a garage somewhere so that's how it all began and 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 here we are 
here we are. And um, don't you feel like, I mean, the toys are cool and everything, but don't you feel like it's more fun being able to share that um, rather than just have them just all to yourself? I, you talked about sharing, and I think that's the that's the key. That's the motivation, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Of course, sharing the, you know, the figures and just how cool the designs are, but also sharing the experience of, um, you know, growing up with these guys where like, say you, you go into a lot of toy shops and things nowadays and like, let's be honest, you know, it's like a lot of stuff's kind of a bit, um, on the nose you could say and um it's like well back in like the 1980s you know we had really awesome stuff and let's you know encourage people to you know i guess as consumers and and product buyers to demand better stuff because you know like the standards have, have slipped it's, it's definitely a different uh, environment for toys, a wildly different environment than, uh, for toys than what we remember. Uh, you touched on it a little bit, and I think I, I want to uh, pick your reign about it more, uh, and that is uh, your experience with G.I. Joe uh, uh, as a child. Can you, can you tell us about what it was like to be a fan when you were a kid? What, what was your experience with it? Well, it all began... Um... We got, uh, for Christmas, I think in 1985, I got an A-Team play set that had, you know, all the guys like Hannibal, Face, Murdoch, and Mr. T, or no, B.A. Baracus, I do apologize. Um, you know, we got that and that was awesome. And it came with, and, you know, you just messed around with them and they had a, a dinghy and all sorts of gear and that was cool. Um, and then moving forward from that, we went to the shops one time and um, I'm going to give a bit of a plug here. Oh, I like plugs. Oh, so my favorite uh, football team of all time is a team called Melbourne, the Melbourne Demons. And of course their colors, as you can see, are red and blue mm -hmm. and um we went to a shop called Meyer at a place called Knox City, uh, southeastern suburbs of Melbourne. And I saw an action figure that was the same colour as my football team. And that, of course, was the original Viper. And I'm like... Yeah. <laughs> you know, just speechless. And, you know, I hassled my, my lovely mum... And she was kind enough to purchase that. And, you know, just having like this one um, action figure and, you know, was just, it opened up um, so many possibilities and just seeing the artwork on the back of, you know, the cross cell with all the other figures that were available that year, you know, that just created a million um, possibilities for adventure um, you know, with different characters and things like that. And, you know, every sort of week uh, with my pocket money, which, um, you know, a couple of bucks or whatever, you'd save up and, you know, you'd gradually get another one and we got like Falcon and Jinx and a few others. And, you know, you'd build up, a, you know, this massive fun um, play situation. And I'm... Um, also, like, we were going to move house in 1987, I think it was, and we had heaps of cardboard boxes, uh, but we never ended up moving for whatever reason, but we had these cardboard boxes left over, and every single one of them, we just made them into, like, bases that's, for cobras, and, that's you know, awesome. you'd make, yeah, you'd make, like, you'd just get, like, a um, you know, what we call a Stanley knife or a box cutter. Um, and you'd make them into, you know, forts and castles and bases and stuff. Um, and yeah, just have fun. And, you know, that was like what you do on a Saturday afternoon. Like, yeah. 
You know, it's funny, like we are on opposite sides of the planet, but and I'm a little bit older than you, but our childhood experiences playing with these toys is not that dissimilar. I mean, we we did a lot of the same things um, with this basically the same toys. And I think that's really fascinating that uh, we can live on other sides of the globe and have such similar experiences. Um, but, uh, but your, your, your gateway was Cobra. The, the Viper was your gateway in, is that right? Absolutely. That, that was the hook. Um, um so, so do you, if, do you have a, I, do you have a favorite Cobra? Um, wow. That's a tough one. You know, um, Wow, that's a very good question. See, there. This is um, this is the hard hitting journalism that you can expect. Uh, these are the mm -hmm. tough, uh, hardball questions that you can expect in an interview from me. Uh, so, uh, but I mean, the Viper was your first. I mean, you you, you uh, there's got to be some kind of sentimental attachment to the first one that you picked up. Um, but um, since then, of course, you've had access to everything, right? You you now at this point, you've seen everything. Um, would you, I mean, is the sentimental, sentimental attachment to the Viper still what stands out the most, or is there any other character that really jumps out at you that, uh, that means more? <laughs> yeah, I know those guys. Slice and dice. Slice and dice. Yeah. I love those guys. They're, um, definite favorites. And, um, yeah, I thought I'd bring them along for show and tell. Um, uh, so they'd, they'd be up there. Um, also you probably recognize these guys. Absolutely. Oh yeah. Now I didn't actually get them when I was a young lad. Um, like they were like sort of adult collector pieces, you know, that I've got, you know, in the last couple of years, but, um, yeah, obviously Viper, um, Slice and Dice um, and the Baroness and Firefly are um, up there with my favorite Cobras. So. Awesome. Um, we talked about uh, your childhood experience, but you also touched on like coming back to it as an adult. Um, can you can you tell us a bit more about that, about coming back to this and kind of rediscovering uh, your enjoyment of it? <clears throat> yeah, well, as I sort of mentioned, you know, they were all sitting in tubs in like the garage and, you know, we moved house in for some reason I moved house a lot. I don't know why. Um, but anyway, you know, you just sort of open up these big tubs and it's like, oh, my, wow, all this stuff, like, it needs some love. And that was kind of what motivated me. And of course, like we had to stay at home um quite a bit a few years ago for no apparent reason which i won't oh, yeah. mention um yeah. and that that sort of became a hobby of mine you know just researching the characters fixing everyone up you know replacing like i must have replaced hundreds of o-rings and stuff like that you know some of the figures had you know the old busted thumb syndrome and you know i'd be like searching for replacement arms and things like that. And, you know, the old uh, unfortunate um, waist piece injury that does happen to some figures, um, you know, we have to fix that up. And yeah, it was just, um, like I said, I, I didn't want this, you know, box of what would seem like other people to be, you know, bits of random plastic to just yeah. go to waste or something like that. And, and of course, all of the sentimental, you know, memories and, and playtime and stuff like that from back in the day. And like, um, if my partner goes out, um, I might, you know, bust out some guys for a quick battle every now and then when she's gone. Um, but uh, don't tell her that, of course. Um, yeah, no, nobody will ever hear this. Don't worry about it. It's just, it's just going out on the internet. But nobody, no, I'm sure, I'm sure she won't see it. Um, yeah. But that, that's so you you um, still had some childhood toys. Then you still had some of the ones that you played with back then. Yeah, absolutely. Um, like I said, um, they've just been 
you know, doing time in these plastic tubs. And, you know, they've gone from that to being restored, having new parts and uh, being fixed up where possible. And, um, yeah, we've got the, like a display, um, you know, case for them now down in the lounge room. So they've really, you know, regained their, you know, former glory and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, um, I remember if you don't mind me, uh, rattling on, if you will pardon the pun, um, I remember back in like 1994 or thereabouts and like GI Joe as a brand copped like a few blows because a, um, the comic book, you know, wrapped up, of course, which was, that was pretty hard to deal with. And then B, of course, you know, you go to the toy shop next year and it's like, hey, there's a lot of Star Trek, the next generation and micro machines and stuff and Ninja Turtles. But, you know, like our our good friends at G.I. Joe were gone. Um, and that was like a real, like, that was a downer, I've got to say. Um, and I, I ended up, you know, taking it out uh, or just like not for a long time. I I didn't lose interest in the brand and the, the characters and stuff like that. But that was a real sort of culture shift, as it were, because, you know, it was like every year, you know, the, the Joes are there, you know, yeah. and all that. And also, I guess, you know, I would have been uh, 14 or at that point in time. And as you sort of um, get to that age, you discover different things. Mm -hmm. Um, And I started playing guitar and heavy metal bands and, you know, um, all the other things that sort of come with that. And of course, yeah, as I said, you know, our good friends at GI Joe ended up in plastic tubs and not getting looked at for a while, which um you know i'm glad i've been able to bring the guys back and you know enjoy them again and have so much fun and and share all the memories with everyone that's that's fantastic i'm also really glad that you dug into uh the archives there and uh, and brought them out um and then you you got on youtube uh and you started doing videos uh talk about like how you started that, why you started that, and kind of how that launched. Yeah, well, um, I guess, um, say professionally, something I've done for a long time is talk to people, be that like talk to them on the phone or, you know, go to conferences and just talk um, and things like that. And yeah, hopefully I've been able to, convince some people of something along the way and yeah i just thought hey let's talk and let's share my memories um originally i started out doing like music related videos like um you know uh showing people how to play songs uh, which i still do um you know talking about music and my favorite cds and then as i was sort of you know going through the, the the old gi joes and stuff i thought well hey i could talk about this and i just thought you know this like as i as i think i mentioned before you know i've got a wealth of memories and stuff that i wanted to share with everyone which is where it all began i guess when you talk about assemble the troops and um i guess coming up with the name for the show was probably the the most difficult thing <laughs> <laughs> well it's a good name it's a good name it flows really well it's way better than hooded cobra commander 788 that's your your name flows much better so uh, you you picked a good one you picked a good yeah. one. no no thank you and um yeah i remember like in a lot of the bands that i've played in um you know coming up with the name for the band was always the hardest thing you know we'd be sitting around and we'd be like oh are we going to call ourselves the rhythm brothers or something you know you'd just be stuck on coming up with a name 
And um, the a lot of people have asked me this, um, Mr. 788, and I will have to, here we go, uh, a real n news scoop, um, breaking news on HCC 788. The whole, um, where is it? There it is. The Rob Vegas name. I did not come up with that. That was given to me by someone else. Um, so, because if you, sometimes if you give yourself a nickname, it can backfire. Because yes. uh, one of my buddies, he's, he wanted, he said, man, I want you guys to call me Sniper. And of course, being Australian and, you know, how we roll here, we are so, you know, you don't come up, yeah, as best as you can, don't come yeah. up with a nickname for yourself. But um, me and my buddies in the band, um, we always used to talk about traveling to Las Vegas and being like the Rat Pack, like Frank Sinatra and Dean Martin. Yeah. And, you know, just, you know, living it up and like Sammy Davis Jr. And yeah. That was just the thing we were obsessed with for a couple of months. And then one of the guys just goes, yeah, you're Rob Vegas. And, you know, that's, that, that's a good name. It's a good nickname. You, you, yeah. You got to keep that. You got to. Yes. You must roll with that. That's an excellent, excellent name. It's a good name. Yeah. Um, and uh, we talked a little bit about uh, before we started. Uh, first of all, to let everybody know, uh, of course, we're recording this well in advance of when you will see it. Uh, this will be uh, put up during Cobra Convergence. Uh, there will be a link to Rob's channel in the description of this video. You can go straight to it and check out what he's doing. Um, and um, so we're recording this before you have done your Cobra Convergence entry. Um, but um, for those who are about to go and see it right now, uh, can you uh, just talk to us a little bit about what you're planning to do, uh, some ideas that you're working on? What what might they expect to see when they go check out Cobra Convergence 7 with Rob Vegas? Now, um, of course, we have an espionage spy theme this year, I believe. And I've decided to roll with that. But we're going to do it in a kind of 1970s, British police show sort of style. So if you can imagine, if you think back to say um, the professionals or something like that, mm -hmm. or whatever, the Sweeney, that's how we're rolling this year. So we are going to go full tilt on that theme and we're going to see some all sorts of espionage and spy action. So I, I hope you can join me for that. And um, yeah, we, we might even put in a few bonus videos through the month of Cobra Convergence as well. But... That that would be uh, excellent. And I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing it. Just the description that you're giving me, I am eager to see what you come up with. It's going to be fantastic. Um, so uh, we, let's see. We talked about your favorite Cobra. We talked about your history. We talked about the past. And you, we even got the scoop. We got the scoop on your name. You know, this is, you know, a first here. You know, you you heard it here first. Um, but, uh, uh, yeah, you, um, there seems to be a, a pretty sizable uh, Australian uh, fan base for G.I. Joe. At least there are a lot of them in our community that you're, you're aware of them as well. Um, um I mean, was that a big thing in uh, in Australia when you were growing up? Was that something that a lot of kids were into? It's funny that you mentioned that because a lot of people gravitated towards, like in like where I grew up, like Masters of the Universe seemed to be everyone's jam, and same with the Transformers. Um, like I, I didn't really dig masters but i do have some transformers kicking around and um yeah uh, i guess you know say growing up and you know my dad shout out to him um he i don't know always brought home you know like every weekend we'd have like a video night and you know we'd watch like commando or you know 
Rambo first yeah. play part two and you know so on and so forth you know James Bond blah 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 and I guess the whole action aspect of those movies had a big influence on playtime and yeah you know you'd have like it'd be like well uh, they they don't really have giant robots or you know skeleton dudes from outer space um in the army and in those movies and things um these action figures you know like say for example you know this kind of you know good old general hawk was yeah. kind of more more relatable than you know something far out and fantastical like robotech or whatever so that was kind of what we gravitated towards and appreciated a lot. Um, you know, we'd watch a lot of, um, gee, far out. I hope my parents don't see this, but yeah, we'd watch a lot of World War II movies and things like that. And it was just like, well, that sort of, you know, translates into playtime um, a bit easier than, you know, uh, like obviously there are fantastical elements to G.I. Joe, like um, of course. And um but yeah, that just translated a lot better and was more relatable to to me growing up. And you know, that was yeah, a, a big influence. There was a lot of uh, kind of uh, cultural influence at the time that fed into that popularity. You're exactly right. You uh, G.I. Joe, at least not till 1987, didn't have a movie. And the, the 87 movie wasn't a big one. But there were all these other movies and TV shows and things that um, that kind of fed into that, that appreciation. And uh, that's just something that if you grew up in that time, you know, you're, you're very aware of that. Um, so uh, I, I, I want to wrap up by basically giving you the floor and le letting you have a few last words with our audience. But before that, before that, I wanted to, uh, to put you on the spot. We've had you for Cobra Convergence 6. We've got you for Cobra Convergence 7. Can I lock you in for Cobra Convergence 8? Well, um... Absolutely, sir. All right, cool. Uh, I, I, and, and I say that having absolutely zero plan for that. That's way like out in the future. But uh, but now I've locked you in. You're locked in. Um, well, uh, Rob, thanks for talking to me. Um, I would like to uh, basically turn the floor over to you uh, to say any parting words you'd like to say uh, to the audience before we send them off to check out your Cobra Convergence 7 presentation. Well, um normally i'd end on a song or something like that um but yeah and no, i just wanted to say thank you to everyone out there in the youtube community for you know dropping by to the channel and saying good day or um whatever it is you say in other countries and of course yeah just keep on sharing keep on enjoying and you know there's so much awesomeness from our good friends at G.I. Joe, A Real American Hero, The Lion, and Cobra. And I just hope everyone can, you know, share their memories and, you know, inspire other people to do so. And, yeah, assemble those troops, as it were. All right. Thank you, Rob. And and thank you for sharing your memories. Uh, I, I, I love it and I appreciate that you've done it. Um, and uh, once again, everyone, there will be a link in the description of this video that will take you directly to to Rob uh, to check out his uh, Cobra Convergence 7 presentation. This uh, uh, interview will go up the same day that his goes up. So by the time you see this, you should be able to see his. So uh, everybody go check it out. Uh, thank you again, Rob. Thanks for doing it. Thanks for everything you did last year. And thank you for everything you're doing this year. And I will... Uh, I will talk to you again soon.